You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Buzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is After Buzz TV's Under the Dome After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's After Buzz TV's Under the Dome After Show. Hey everybody, Bing is for doing, and we are here doing another Under the Dome after show. This is episode 112, Exigent Circumstances. I'm Matt Lieberman, and joining me as always is the fabulous and talented Miss Jackie Borowski. Hello. And we have a very, very special guest in the studio with us this evening, the fantastic Miss Jolene Purdy, who, yeah. <laughs> Hi, who died. Who played Dodie oh, no. until recently. <laughs> I, I, we're still reeling over, over this episode. Well, that was the spoiler I was telling you about, because I stupidly read articles about the episode before watching it. See, that's the thing. Stay off the internet. Stay off the All internet. All day long. Mm-hmm. That's why I, 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 don't, I only read mentions on Twitter. I don't read, like, like the straight feed, because I know I'm going to find something I don't want to see. Um, but I said, literally, I said to Jackie at the top of the episode, when you first went to go talk to Big Jim, I'm like, there's no way that they're going to kill Dodie, right? And <laughs> she was just, like, so coyly quiet. And I, was I was quiet the whole time because he keeps throwing out different things. He's like, but what if this happens? And then he said something correct, and I was just like. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> um, so sad to see you go. We were Aww. we were so pulling for a romance between you and Phil. Oh, Fody. We've uh, oh. nicknamed them Fody. Yes. That, is, that is a great uh, We were Fody shippers. We That's were Fody we were. shippers, totally. <laughs> well, what would be an Angie and Ben shipper name? I mean, Anne. Mm. He's the only Angie and Ben shipper that I have ever Cause heard he of. Because he was nice. Because he was nice to her, and I, I want something good to happen to him. Aww. He's such a burnout loser, <laughs> right. and I want him to have like direction in life. Uh, but anyway, let's let's because, get into the because Angie would give it to him. Sure. Okay. She's I mean, when full you of direction. when you say it like she that, she stole an ambulance in this episode, and she smokes. Ugh. But and they're kind of a good match, I think, if they're both kind of burnouts, right? Right? Yeah. And I think, oh, yeah. I think that like maybe seeing that in her would make him realize, you know what, I have to step up and be responsible because she's not going to. But then again, she's now a business owner. She, she is now a business owner. That's true. That is true. Yeah. yeah. I think that that would give him just the jolt in the arm that, that he needs. But in, in any <laughs> sense, let's get into this episode because so much happened. Big Jim, Ascendant, he's now kind of like – ruler of this town with an iron fist he's got his own little personal gestapo army of uh dudes wearing armbands who get the secret guns <laughs> that's actually a thing in the book is it yes they have uh they've overloaded in the book they start overloading the police when this this happens in the book they frame barbie for murder and so when they start overloading the police when he's framed for murder they give everybody armbands um to be in solidarity with the police that is that is against Barbie. Yeah, and so I like I actually liked that touch because we were at a point where we were so far away from the book that I was like I, and some characters I like better in the book. I like your character or better on screen. I like your character better on oh, screen thanks. than is in the <laughs> book. Yeah. She doesn't last very she long in the book. She lived a little longer in yeah. yeah. the show, so I was very happy about she's that. Much, <laughs> she's much cooler in the show, which we can talk about later, but. Um, uh, that was one of the things I liked from to see from the book, the the sort of like armband Gestapo team. Yeah, because like when we spoke with Neil a few weeks ago, he made it sound like they had finally kind of like stepped away from the book to make their own thing. Uh, Neil's leading us down torrential paths. <sighs> <laughs> He's a sneaky dude, that Neil Bear. Yeah, but know? he did yeah. give us some. He did give us some preview insight. Yes, which finally paid off in this episode. We yeah. got to see. Uh, Carolyn stand up to Big Jim. We got to see Junior have that kind of threaten moment with uh, with Big Jim as well. Big Jim was all over this episode. You could feel his presence in every scene uh, because he he was just he was in charge, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
he's he's like on on a knife. Big Jim was a dictator. He was a dictator, but on a knife's edge. You know, like the only thing that could possibly undo his his reign, as it were, is Julia's testimony. Right. Um, so. Well, and then you also have Joe, who knows that Barbie helped Julia get better when he was in the hospital. Yeah. So it's he doesn't know that part though. So it's even if he killed Julia, there would still be a witness. True. But let's talk about your kind of part of this episode as this tragically episode was crazy. short as it was. It was so crazy. <laughs> All over the place. And everybody had story. Like, I'm always happy. Like, there are characters like, like your character and Phil and Linda to an extent who, like, you won't show up for a few episodes. And then when you come back, do you get, like, a nice juicy piece or do you kind of just, like, give some exposition? You got, like, a nice good bit. Yeah, there was a lot of exposition kind of going on because she's the tech whiz and she's, you know, Mm -hmm. the connection to the outside world. So this was kind of the first um, episode that I really got to act. (laughs) Yeah, which is like such a bummer because like it's the first episode and the last episode. I know, but it was great. They did a great job writing the scene. I was very, very, very happy with it. And Dean was amazing and so supportive. And we worked all day long, fire gunshots it was crazy i was like i was so proud of you in the scene or at least of dodi because like everybody else nobody plays it smart when they're in <laughs> that situation i, I feel like you played it right up until and then you, you realized about the dome coming down what was interesting to me is you uh your character realized that she was a goner there was yeah. a point where she was just like i'm trying the best i can do to get out of the situation and then it turns and she's just like i'm I can't. I yeah. can't. She realizes it. I love that she's so quick on her feet that she's kind of changing her game as she sees what Big Jim is throwing down. And she's not great at interpersonal relationships. Yeah. But I think it was really good that she just kept changing it up. I don't think I would have fared so well under those circumstances. Oh, come on. But, yeah. I mean, she kept it long enough for me to have a great monologue. <laughs> oh, totally. It was a great monologue. It was so. really, really awesome. Yeah, and you just got to see her like trying every single tack, mm-hmm. you know, staying relatively toe-to-toe until you just take one step too far and like you could bring the dome down, you could be a hero, which like should make sense because yeah. he's hungry for hero worship. Right. Yeah. But he needs that dome to stay up for him to continue to have this little empire of his. Yeah. And now also that he's probably wanted for murder in the outside world. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But you know what really bums me out? The fact that now there's absolutely no contact to the outside world <laughs> well, because he destroyed everything yeah, technologically everything. advanced. And we're going to, yeah, that especially, but also, like, you got shot in the same part of your body as Julia an episode ago, and she's fine. <laughs> Well, everybody's an individual, and their bodies are made up differently, and so, Mm -hmm. you know, like... Yeah, and he burned you before anyone could help out with that. Yeah, charred and and charcoal. Exactly. Yeah, Yeah, you're too too charred up for anyone to dig that bullet out. Yeah. Sorry. I heard, uh, I was reading your Twitter, and uh, somebody commented that you had been in a scene with him in Breaking Bad as well. I I had, and he made me cry there, too. (laughs) You were a cashier, right? (laughs) I was. I played a cashier, and I took the the drugs, and he came in and questioned me and um, made me cry, and Mm -hmm. don't tell my dad. Oh, yeah, I totally remember that scene. Dean Norris, (laughs) always making you cry. Making me cry. (laughs) So I told him, next time time we work together Mm -hmm. i'm gonna make you cry i I can't wait for that yeah Yeah. i don't know if that can happen but that's like appreciate it that's such a joy to be able to work with someone like dean twice in like you know what three years two three years yeah yeah and i was very excited the first day i met him he looked at me and he goes dreamy eyes Mm -hmm. (laughs) so he remembered me and we uh we had really good work together he's just so supportive on set so terrific Yeah. yeah so let's talk about the what you heard on the outside, right? So This was also, sorry to backtrack, this was also something I didn't see them bringing in because in the beginning, from the very beginning of the book, uh, Barbie is made like the, the, the main person in the town by the military. And I was like, ah, they're not going to be able to bring that in because so much has changed. And then they kind of, like, bring it in. The, the army guy, Cox, is the same guy in the book. Mm-hmm. 
and they're kind of getting some of the same tidbits of information. I was shocked. I'm like, they're tying in stuff that I did not think they would be able to tie in. <laughs> well, they're they're doing a good job of it. But so I'm gonna just like shut up now unless something has actually happened. <laughs> but I'm like, I'm just supremely curious as to why on earth they need him at this point. Like, what are they? What is what is the outside world? want with the people inside the dome at this point like are the magnetic poles still being affected is it causing crazy weather around the world and are what do they dying? know about the dome egg or what do they think they can learn from barbie how did they scan the dome egg in the first place <laughs> they can't blow up the dome but they can scan for the dome egg yeah with <laughs> UAVs that we never saw, right? Like they had to have a flyover at some point, but they we had no one in town saw it. That's true. You see helicopters around though, and at least the dome is transparent, so maybe it yeah. was possible. It's in the middle of it's in the middle of the forest. It was covered in leaves. I don't, I know. don't know. Exactly. <laughs> Is there some things maybe we're just we're better off not knowing? It's the magic of television. I feel like they might be a little bit worried that there's going to be uh, another dome popping up. Oh, totally. So, yeah. Yeah. They got to keep an eye on that little dome. Yeah, and just the government in general, something that you can't understand must be controlled or eliminated. Yeah, right. um, yeah. So it's interesting that they still think, they think he has the training for something. We don't quite know what the training is or if the government knows something that we don't. Um, and I guess we'll find out hopefully next episode, if not next season. Yes. yes. Um, which hopefully you'll come back as a dome ghost. I have no idea. <laughs> you and Alice can both come back as dome ghosts. And hold yeah. hands. And hold yeah. hands. <laughs> maybe there and was solve a... all the dome problems. Hey, maybe there was a baby born at the same time that you died, too. <laughs> and maybe. she gets named Dodie. Or Fody. Or Fody. Oh. <laughs> that was really, that was a very sad moment when Phil, my heart broke when he when realized he that Dodie had died. Yeah. And he just said she didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. You know, and it's like, this is the, I mean, on a, it's a, if the dome is a microcosm, it's like sometimes bad things happen to good people. And, Unfortunately, know. and you put your faith in the wrong people and, um. Yeah. And he goes and around. kicks Barbie. He roundhouse kicks Barbie <laughs> yes, in the face. Does. It was brutal. I was like, I was like, he's just gonna punch him, right? No. No. He roundhouse kicked him in the face. That was how angry he, he was. He drew yes. blood. It was rad. <laughs> yeah. I never knew he had that kind of like rage in him, but that would bring it out. Yes. You know, did had you two talked about um, about Dodie and Phil's relationship and their past together in in kind of coming up with the characters we did when we first got together after the first table read we um sat for like two hours and just kind of threw ideas off of each other about kind of how they met and just made it up on our own which was so much fun we both come from theater so like the character development is like just between the two of us the chemistry that we have just in life and on screen it's yeah. awesome so we built these characters together we didn't really even between the two of us define that, so I think it gave it maybe a little bit more. Sure, of a will they, won't they, because you two didn't know either. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Oh. Yeah. I like that, though. It's good to hear that you guys talked about it because we were, it clearly made uh, an impact on the audience. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, of course. It was just fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about Linda who a couple episodes ago, right, was ready to bring Big Jim in for all of his crimes. Right. And now she is just his attack dog. And I'm I'm getting, I'm I, like, I know how ridiculous it sounds to be mad at a fictional character, but I'm mad at her. She's smarter than this. He brings in two teenagers, right? He brings in two teenagers and locks them up. Can't, doesn't give her any good reason why. She walks right down there with Barbie, doesn't say a word about it, and then he, when he says, go follow those teenagers, they might, have, they might be able to have access to what might bring the dome down. She doesn't question that either. Where yeah. is he getting his information? I have no idea, but well, maybe... Well, you do know, because it was you. Well, <laughs> well, I think maybe she knows the history of uh, Colin Ford, um, Joe, sorry, yeah. I spaced on his name. Sorry. Joe, maybe she knows the back history of him and how um, he's kind of a troubled teen. And she definitely knows that Nori was is, on her way to a little troubled, yeah. rehab or, or something. So maybe she's just kind of, they're teenagers. Uh, we, also, we also, we um, also, 
talked about we've talked about Linda being kind of a bandwagonist. Like she just yeah. kind of like she has such a good heart that she's like, oh, this person can't be lying. So she kind of jumps on to whatever. Yeah. She's very susceptible to that. I feel. She's very easily swayed. Yes. She wants to see the best in everybody. And everybody. So when somebody makes a suggestion to her, she's like, oh, that sounds like a good Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, I'll go do that. Which is not what we need in a head sheriff. But she's new. I know. Well, yeah, it's only been, it's only been 12 days. It's yeah. only been 12 days. You gotta give her a break. I'm skipping ahead a little bit, but... It's only been 12 days, and Dale Barbara said he loves hey, Julia. Hey. That was my favorite moment. That was your favorite moment? More than the roundhouse kick to the face? Well, no, that actually, shows, no. Yeah. That was my, that was a good moment. This whole episode was a favorite I moment. I know. This is, this <laughs> Except is for easily, when Dodie died. I know. Did not like that. Did oh, not like it, sorry. but it was such a well-done scene that I'll, I'll say I liked it. Just because I was just like, they gave you, they, they did it justice. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It didn't feel cheap. It felt earned. You know, you did everything that you could to get out of it, and then he still was a cold, heartless bastard. Mm -hmm. And then he set the whole place on fire. Yeah. 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 I loved that <laughs> shot of Dean uh, lighting up that banner as he's walking down the stairs. And you see him. He lights the corner, and then he brings the lighter up to try to light it again. He misses, but he just kind of keeps walking. Yeah. He's like, he did his yeah. job. Yeah. Um, oh. I just feel that there was more of Dodie's story that could have been told. Yes. It, it felt very cut short for me. I think so, too. But, you know, you got to make it a little interesting for the viewers and really make sure that they know how awful Big Jim is. Yes. So this was a way to really make sure the audience was yeah. not going to side with him. And we didn't see it coming. That was it, the other thing. Yes. We saw, we thought Linda might die next because she knows too much information. It's true. Mm -hmm. And Big Jim knows that she knows information. So we didn't see, because Dodie still had so many questions that she needed answered. Mm -hmm. So we didn't, we were, that wasn't a fourth, that wasn't a thought in our mind. Yeah. I didn't really see it coming either. <laughs> <laughs> so when Aww. I got the phone call, I was surprised. But yeah. I think it was for good, so. Yeah. I, th I think ultimately it will be a very memorable death. Uh, much like much like Alice's, they only kill the people we like recently. <laughs> they got rid of all the loose ends at the top, right? And they killed Coggins, which we were very happy <laughs> about. But then now, and now Alice, and then you. It's just like, when are they gonna start killing Joe? I'm like, it, it's like no one's safe. Uh, yeah, no one's safe. I feel They're like the kill females ben. aren't yeah. safe. No, I feel like that too. It's been a lot yeah. of the girls. We That's need to get true. some guys under the dome. I agree. <laughs> under the I ground, agree. under the dome. Under the ground, under the dome. Yeah. Yes. Under the ground, under and the Julia's dome. And Julia's husband doesn't count because no one Jack cared built. about him. It's true. That's true. Peter Shumway was a, was a dick. <laughs> He was. He was going to lost the house. He spent everything on his stupid gambling addiction. But I mean, he killed himself so she could take the insurance money. I'm just going to say one thing right now, okay? Julia is too good of a woman to be with that guy. You look at that guy, and you look at her, and you get to know her, and you get to know what he did, and I'm just like, how on earth did she ever choose this guy? Right? Because he's like, he's this nebbishy dude yeah. who's very inconsiderate and was kind of like gone at all hours, gambling, got in deep with Maxine. I don't know. That's a huge tangent. But like. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like maybe she was done with him too, though. Mm. Yeah. Because she moved on to Barbie really fast. Really she did. fast. 12 days, right? Well, yeah. how many <laughs> days? It was like five days before they started hooking up. Yeah. Five or six, mm. yeah. Not even a week. Jeez. Oh, if she starts saying that she loves him, too, I'm going to be so mad. Of course she loves him, she too. Loves him. But that's crazy. No. You it's... have to admit that's crazy. But you could die the next day, literally. Like, you could, like, there are just I know. people dying. The dome could collapse. So it's like, you got to say you, you love the person before. You never know. How about, I have very strong feelings for you, and I hope this goes somewhere. You are not romantic at all, man. No. Either. I can be. <laughs> I'm just also realistic. <laughs> it is not like that's that seems a bit much to me. If I was Julia, even though okay, granted you're under a dome and you could die any day, mm -hmm. blah 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 blah. <laughs> blah 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 blah. I <laughs> it's like dot to dot. I understand yes. that. But like, if if he said that to me, I'd be like, 
Whoa, pal, you did kill my husband. Let's let's hold up. I haven't quite forgiven you yet. That's that's a lot to handle. Yeah. I have known you a, a little under two weeks. Yeah, but it's it's also the circumstances there. I agree with what you said earlier. It's the circumstances they're under. They're I under know. like life and death circumstances all the time. And fans will agree with you too. I just feel the need to point it out cuz I guess I be, hate everything. It would be creepy if this was it would be creepy if it was like normal life and this was a person who was like, "Hey, let's go out to lunch." And then said they loved you 2 days later. That would be creepy, but they've had a lot of like real life or death situations yeah. that they've had yeah. to handle. Okay, it's just like, I think there, there are ways to say it without saying it. Like, you know, like, like I'm coming back for you. With that level of intensity. Like, that's like, okay, we know he loves her, but like, anyway, I'm gonna get off that, that horse. <laughs> we're gonna put it back in the stable. We're gonna close the stable. We're gonna throw some food inside, and we're gonna forget that it ever existed. Uh, well, we'll keep it alive. But anyway, <laughs> uh, as long as we're maintaining the horse metaphor, we don't want a dead horse. <laughs> And now I'm beating a dead horse. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what just happened. That was amazing. Thank you. So let's uh, let's talk about Angie. So it, we were talking about this scene. So Barbie and Angie. Well, first uh, off, Angie is the worst candy striper ever. She candy she does her job in like the first episode, and mm -hmm. then yes, she's like locked under. She candy stripes when it's convenient. Yeah. Then she's like locked under the ground forcibly against her own will. So yeah. that's understandable that she's not working. But then she just never goes back to work, and she's like. I think I'm just going to take the diner. Well, yeah. she was kind of, didn't she, she went to rehab too, and when she came back, that was kind of her punishment, was to be a candy striper. So she wasn't really invested in it. It was just kind of her community That's service yeah. to get out of things. And now she's using it to, to seduce, dare I say, poor Junior. I like. I've, it's not fair, because Junior loves her so much that, so yeah, much. that so she's much. using it against him. So much that it's crazy? <laughs> maybe a little bit but uh like she got all she got dressed up in her little candy striper outfit she knew he wouldn't be able to resist it and uh and he like he so wants her to love him back mm -hmm. you know what like it, like he just he, it's true. he means it's everything so that he that he says even when it comes off a little creepy like it feels so good just to hold you again <laughs> that is like it's it's creepy when he says it especially knowing things that we know but like objectively, that is really sweet. He misses her, and she took advantage of his of his puppy dog love thing. You know, um, his puppy he dog locked her thing. up. She could take advantage. I know, and like literally, <laughs> Jackie will tell you. Last week, I was I was like, don't bring these two back together. I can't believe she's forgiving him for all these things because like we still haven't dealt with that, you know. Um, but at the same time. I don't like when she's lying back. I want her to be able to maintain her moral high ground. Okay? I'm not really sure mm. she has one. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Well, she's not a great person then. <laughs> oh. She's not. I want You just want her to be a great person. I want I you want, love Angie. I want everyone to be a great person because I true. want the best for everybody. You do. You okay? do. It's true. It's true. And that's why I'm so sad that you're dead, because now Phil will never find <laughs> Phil now, will never find love. Phil will never find love. He's just going to wear terrible shirts. And <laughs> oh. that shirt with the banjo and the violin and the guitar was ridiculous. I'm sorry. It you didn't was. think it was fun? I okay. I thought it was playful okay. at best. Yeah. But He's just going to be. It's it, just going to be revenge under got, the dome. Yeah, we need we need more photoshopped backgrounds. We had one that was um, love under the dome with Dale Barbara, um, oh. and it's it was the under the dome reality show where he was the bachelor, and uh, everyone wanted him. <laughs> oh. Yes. So we, this one would we be. We have fun here. This one oh. would be revenge under the dome. Revenge under the with dome. Phil. Oh, we'll totally yeah. use the font from the show Revenge, and yes. it'll be Junior in that yeah. spiky dress. In the. <laughs> There we go. Why is Junior a part of this? He's a part of everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He is. He's like the living understanding of the dome. Yeah. Did you see that BuzzFeed article about, about Alex Koch? That was just like, this hotness has arrived. Oh. That was the one I sent to yeah, you. Yeah, you sent that one to me. 
Yeah. There's a really oh. funny BuzzFeed article about him. Yeah. You should, you should. I need to see it. You need to look into that. It's a, it's a total, it's so funny too. It's a total like fangirl like article with just like gifs and pictures of him and like all these like It's like, isn't he like, dreamy? Yeah. Look at it. Yeah. Everyone's in love with him. They like tweet me asking Which is like, crazy because he's I like crazy. that they tweet you asking this. Well, because yeah. we all live tweeted together during oh. the premiere and things. And so I handed him my computer and was like. You don't have a Twitter. Take mine, and that I think that may oh, have been no. a mistake. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> They're like no. Jolene. Tell him that I love him. Yeah. When he gets a Twitter, we'll get married. It's oh, like, God. will you? Uh, Twitter bringing people together. Yeah, but no. you know his mm. character, you know, is knows a lot more than people give him credit for, mm -hmm. because he there that moment because most when you first watch the show you're like this guy's nuts right yeah. and then and then the second time you watch the show you're like this guy's nuts and then repeat <laughs> but then you get to like the sixth or seventh episode and you're like wait but he really does understand things about the dome now i'm questioning my thinking of him being totally nuts yeah. now he's just like half nuts and like every bad half thing nuts. every bad thing that he's done he's done for a good reason yes uh he just, that, that, like that's the thing. He has a very good heart. Some would say it is. It is in fact a pure heart. Mm -hmm. It's just that Neil Baer told us that he had a pure heart. He had a pure heart, yeah. according yeah. to Neil. He has a pure heart. It's just he doesn't really understand the limits of right and wrong. And you know, maybe you don't lock her underground because you think she's sick. You maybe get a <laughs> doctor, or you think you know what? Let's get some advice. <laughs> Or, hey, how about I just give you a nice phone call or a card? <laughs> <laughs> get well soon, and then maybe we'll get back together. But no. he actually, but he understands and perceives more than most, than, than we give him credit for. Because he has in this the shining. Episode, he, yeah, he has, he has the, the shining. shining. He, he has leans the shining. in, yeah. she <laughs> gives him that kiss, and he's like, he's like, I can smell the cigarettes on your breath. And it's like instantly he connects all the things. He's like, okay, who gave her cigarettes last? Barbie. I got mad at Barbie for doing this. Yeah. So he knows that Barbie's going to take Julia, so he runs out of the room. And I was like, he just made all those connections with one simple thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then that fight was epic. Yeah. That fight was epic. They both run at each other like rams. I was like, it's like a dinosaur fight. I know. And then, <laughs> and then Junior just drills him, which I didn't think he had it in him. Right, and then uh, Barbie gets the upper hand, cold cocks him with that pistol, and then they're they're off and running. Now I thought when he snatched up the radio, right, he was going to radio, he was going to radio Linda, and finally be like, Linda, it's Barbie. I didn't do those things. I know you're coming for me. He never says it. Never even tries oh. to convince her because she is again, she's easily he... swayed. Sway her back. I think she's too far gone. Yeah. I don't know. I agree. We'll, we'll, <laughs> I mean, we'll see next week. I mean, it's not like, okay, it's not like he killed Duke. If he had killed Duke, I'd understand I'm not going to listen to you. Mm. Uh, but then again, if she really thought that he'd killed Dodie, I would be inconsolable too. I would not want to listen to him. Yeah. If he had burned you alive. <laughs> burned you to yeah. a crisp, I would not, I would not care what he had to say. <laughs> uh, so then he goes searching, so we have the search for the mini dome egg. Yes, which... To tie up the other loose ends. He's trying to, like, try it, tie up loose ends. Yeah, or... Big Jim, suddenly, he, now he knows about the dome egg. He wants his hands on it so that no one can ever bring the dome down. He's, I, I'm sure he's hoping to hide it or destroy it or something. Uh, and Carolyn will not let him into this barn. She, she refuses, even though it's already been moved. Carolyn was awesome in this episode. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. one of the things I love about this show is like the, there's a great amount of just like strong female characters who that, won't Then back they kill down. or shoot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I have too many strong <laughs> females. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I, I see the duplicitous nature of that. Um, <laughs> They're and all really strong. We should shoot them. <laughs> just so that they know not to get too crazy. Yes. Yeah. That's bad. But men have died too they just tend to suck yeah it's only the sucky men that have died like reverend coggins yeah or like who almost burned himself up anyway yeah or the dundee brothers you know yeah, yeah. or yeah. like the, that crazy cop towards the beginning of the series and i don't remember his name and i feel bad about it i named him peter paul and mary because i i felt like his name was peter and or paul i think it's paul yeah paul makes sense name? i I'm think it's sure. paul i okay. think it's paul 
We're going to go with Paul. Okay. And we're going to move on. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's obsessed with finding this dome egg. He doesn't know what it is. He knows just enough to be stupidly dangerous about it. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like, he doesn't understand the potential. He doesn't know that it's a way to communicate with the dome. He just thinks, okay, this is the generator. It's, like, become the MacGuffin of the show. I need to find this thing, and it will cement my rule forever and ever and ever. People respect me with for no reason uh, other than the fact that I, I am in charge. So they're starting these house sweeps, and uh, Ben, his house gets swept, and the kids bring the dome egg to Ben, who, first of all, where is his dumb hat? I'm Aww. sad that he wasn't wearing it. I like his dumb hat, but it's a dumb <laughs> hat. His little beanie. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you know. Um, and he doesn't ask any questions either. That they is bring... your guy. Yeah. Matt. That's your favorite guy. <laughs> My favorite guy asks no questions because he's loyal just like Truman. But <laughs> you should, when they someone... bring him a weird blanket-shaped object and he just says, yeah. Yeah. Well, dome-shaped <laughs> object, uh, orb-shaped object covered in a blanket, which, like, how many things are that size and that shape <laughs> that need to be hidden? Like, that's weird, right? Yeah. 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 Um, but, I don't know. His stash house is their stash house, so maybe he was high on dope. I don't know. Definitely. De- po- Definitely maybe. Probably. I would say over under 80%. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then the do- the the mini dome starts shrieking, uh, yeah. causing this great loud shrieking sound, and he finds everything that has ever draped anything ever and throws it on top. <laughs> I was waiting for him to grab that funky rug from, from the ground and throw it over the thing, and he didn't, and I was really bummed about that. Uh, and then finally, Joe and Nori show up, and uh, and they get there just in time with Carolyn to see the chrysalis is is opening. Mm-hmm. We don't know what's about to come out. Uh, a we're, butterfly. I mean, we know that. <laughs> a butterfly. <laughs> okay, fine. You're right. We do know what's coming, but what comes when it comes, yes. we don't know. Uh, timed, you know, conspicuously with Barbie's trial of sorts on the front steps. To um, which he says, not guilty. And we were like, <laughs> yes. F yeah, don't you dare take that deal. It is a raw deal, and you don't deserve it. And neither th- neither does anyone else. He's going to fight till the end, and that's why we love him. Yeah. But you that's, were right. You yeah. said a couple episodes ago, this is going to come down to Big Jim and Barbie. Yeah. And you're right. I think the town's going to divide against Big Jim or Barbie. Yeah. Well, it, it, it all remains to be seen what's going to happen in the next episode if Big Jim still retains any of his power, if he's completely knocked off his pedestal, you know? Because, like, once Julia's testimony gets out, people are going to start wondering, well, then who did kill all those people? Wait, right. Big Jim was pretty insistent about this. He's going to be on the run. He's under a dome, so there's not really that many places to hide, except perhaps Bird Island, which... <laughs> Someone actually... Did you read the comment by one of our... Alcatraz. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, Alcatraz, in fact, means Bird Island, apparently. Oh. Um, I don't remember in what language. But, I don't either. Yeah, but someone tweeted at us that Alcatraz yeah. and Bird Island mean the same thing. So is it, is, I don't know, is it just another reference to the fact that the dome is a prison? It's clever. I like it. I liked it too. Yeah. I liked that comment. I like it a lot. Um, I just so much so that we both got nerd excited about it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Bird Did you Island. see the thing? Yeah. <laughs> what does it mean? Is there a hidden prison underneath it? Is it Anyway. I, I go I go way too far with predictions. It's, it happens, and it's going to continue to happen. I'm sorry. It's so much fun, though. Okay, good. Yeah, as a cast, we used to do that. We used to text each other, what do you think is going to happen next? Every time we got a script, two days before we shot. Uh, awesome. yeah. Oh, is that how often you got scripts? Yeah, Only, it's pretty Well, they, it makes sense. Yeah. Because yeah. it's such a confidential like show yeah mm-hmm. but you've got really great predictions thank you yeah good so does she yes yes well you read the book yes I didn't read the book well i i heard that you read part of the way through and then stopped because you didn't want to be spoiled yeah i read until my character died and then i called my manager and was like you said back for six months it seems yeah. like it might be six weeks i mm-hmm. don't know and then i decided i really wanted to let the writers kind of show me where Dodie's going yeah. on the show Sweet. Um, We're just going to take a quick second and talk about iTunes. Guys, thank you so much for keeping us in the top 10 downloads for the 12th consecutive week. Uh, We are so, so excited to do this show, and we're going to be so glad to come back next season. 
Uh, but one thing you can do to help us do that is rate us on iTunes. We love five-star ratings. It helps us uh, secure our kind of reputation around here. It lets us show that it's a quality program. It helps us get wonderful guests like Miss Jolene Purdy. And we hope to do many, many more of these interviews in the future. Uh, so if you can rate and comment and continue to tweet at us and, uh, and comment on YouTube. We love maintaining this conversation with you guys about this show. We love it just as much as you do. And we want to continue that conversation into next week and into the hiatus. Because as soon as we get any s little script or scrap of news about the new season, I want you to tweet it at me so that I know what's going on. Okay, back into the episode. Uh, I think we only have like kind of one last piece to talk about, and that's uh, Angie and Julia. So, Angie... Wait, what about... Okay, oh, yeah. two last pieces. Two last pieces. Junior's <coughs> confrontation of Big Jim. Yes. Okay, we're going to talk about that one last because I think that that kind of leads into predictions for the next episode. Okay. Just, uh, yeah. So this is really quick anyway. So Angie stashes, uh, stashes Julia in the supply closet at the clinic because she very rightly figured that no one would check for them there. Yeah, that was smart. That, that was, was smart. Really smart. Really smart. Shockingly smart. Pick the most, <laughs> yeah, pick the most yeah. obvious place and put her there. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and but at the same time, and I know television, and I sometimes I expect too much logic, but it's like she wakes up, get her some water or something. <laughs> and she, her hair is perfect. Her hair is perfect. <laughs> She's not, always perfect, though. It's beautiful. It's it beautiful. really great hair. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you've ever read Game of Thrones, uh, redheads are kissed by fire. It means that they're lucky. Mm -hmm. um, ugh, nerd. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Um, like but she, I feel like the other characters have more realistic hair expectations. Like they, Angie uh, doesn't. Her hair is always is no, always silky Angie's shiny. Is, no, no, Angie's is never like perfectly curled or something. It looks more like she's been living under the dome for a period of time. I don't know. I still think there's been some conditioner, maybe some dry shampoo through that. <laughs> It, it 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 still looks like she, she's, she's getting hovering it done. in on Maxine's secret stash. Yeah. Of Linda's of items. Dry shampoo. Yeah. <laughs> Linda never has any flyaways. It's always perfectly tucked into the ponytail. And, you know, that thing is just kind of like a rock. It's st it's stable. <laughs> you know what I mean? She didn't have a braid in this episode, though. No. She's gotten... What does that mean? It what does means... that represent about her character? <laughs> her character's getting sloppy. She's coming undone. She's yes. Yes. Uh-oh. Sloppy and undone. Mm-hmm. What happens when she takes it out of the ponytail? I just don't know. I don't know if we're ready for that. No. I don't think we're ready. <laughs> mm -mm. Not even season two. Mm -mm. <laughs> oh my God! What about wait. Dean Norris's hair. <laughs> Dean Norris's hair is immaculate. It is maintained like a well-groomed lawn. I uh, sorry. I just had. I just had a vision. What if Linda and Phil get together? I know she's still married, right? She's married. But what if the dome never comes down, right? Mm -hmm. And he's grieving, and she's there, and I'm just saying. Okay, okay. moving on. Okay, <laughs> fine. Just let, let me ship for everybody. So so Big Jim <laughs> and Junior have the confrontation that Neil told us about. That yes. That he says, um, you know. If you lie to me, it will be bad for both of us. It will be bad for both of us. Yes. Um, you know, Junior is, is... And Junior can sense, like, even though Junior still loves his dad, like I said, he has this extra sense of what's going on, and he knows that his dad is not being honest. It's mm -hmm. true. And he's so kind of lost right now, right? After the vision last episode, the thought that he might be responsible for the death of his father is really scary. As much as he and his dad don't get along, and, and they're really kind of polar opposites at times, he doesn't want to be alone. He doesn't have any other parents. You know, if his dad dies, he's got no one left except for Angie, and she's not even dependable. You know, she's using him. She's either using him or hating Julie's him. Julian's giggling. For those yeah. of you listening on iTunes, she's giggling. About she's that. laughing up a storm. She's like, ha, ha, Alex Coke is lonely. Oh, Aww. I'm sorry, Alex. <laughs> Don't be. Uh, you should be. Uh, if anyone should be sorry, it should be me. I said. I said some mean things before I got to know him oh. uh, on the show. I don't actually know him. Sorry. Um, <laughs> but then he read the Buzzfeed and is now a fangirl too. Whatever. <laughs> Stop. I'm not blushing. It's just red in here. Anyway. Um, so. 
<laughs> so, uh, so they have this confrontation, and I don't know where Junior's ultimately going to fall because I think they are going to have to kill Big Jim at some point. The Dome wants Big Jim dead, right? So if the kids don't try to kill him, who will? Mm -hmm. And do you think that Junior could really go through with it if the time came? Because out of the four kids, he's the only one who's ever killed anybody. I mean, granted, we don't know much about Nori's past, but I don't think she ever killed anyone. Mm -mm. He's the only one who seems capable. Uh, and if he doesn't just do it, I imagine that Angie will eventually snooker him into doing it by lying. <laughs> uh, seriously, she's better than that. She's better than that. Mm, it's all about survival, and I think she's playing the game well. I know, Jolene. I just... <laughs> Damn it! But he he was faced with killing his father before. That's true. That's so true. and he backed and he backed away. Down. He backed yeah, away. He but that's down. when he found out that his father lied to him about the most important thing in his life. Mm -hmm. So he still has that kind of. That's a good point. Lack of trust. That's a good point. So. Um. Okay. I uh, do you think we have that about wrapped up? Okay. So I wanted to start talking to you, Jolene, a bit more generally about your time on the show and uh, and your career and so on and so forth. And thank you again for joining us tonight. Of course. Cool. Um, so when did you first uh, hear about Under the Dome? When did you first get involved with the project? Um, I was sent the script uh, maybe a couple of weeks before the audition, and I fell in love with the script. It was the first time that I was, like, really excited about creating a character and one that had different kind of levels of... Um, I don't know, like tech genius versus interpersonal relationships. And there was just a, a balance that I wanted to try and find with her. And so reading for it was great. I got to give a lot of different levels with mm -hmm. the casting. And we played, and she's, she became this sarcastic, like witty, kind of dry, but good-hearted person. And I was very excited to get to play Dodie. Yeah. It, it's, it's always nice to have the kind of, like, tech-savvy nerd girl because you never get that. Yeah. And so it's – when you're watching a show like that, it's always going to – most of the time it's going to be some guy who is is the tech-savvy, like, mm -hmm. genius. Yeah. And it was He's nice. wearing a hoodie or, yeah. a, or a sweater. <laughs> and it yeah. was nice. And glasses and on a computer. Yeah. Like, it was a nice break of a stereotype. Yeah. I like that. And I, I really liked her depth, you know. I, I felt like she was the kind of person – who it took a while for her to warm up to you. You'd really have to win her over. I felt like she had been failed at some point in her life by the people around her, and you couldn't mm -hmm. earn but her trust Phil. easily. But not Phil. But He's not the Phil. only one. He's yes. frustrating and difficult, but ultimately, you know, you guys survive together. We complete each other. That's yeah. what we kind of discussed, that he's, you know, the face and the spirit of the radio station, and I'm... The tech genius behind it, and it takes both of us to make everything work. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Aww. And I just, I just, and I, we, we talked about it, but specifically the scene where you guys danced uh, in the missile episode was just so awesome. Oh, I really, really loved that scene and the song, and like, you guys just knocked that out of the park. Like, if if people weren't shipping already, that's when it started. Yeah, that's really <laughs> that's when, when it they it took off into the stratosphere. <laughs> yeah. That was a lot of fun. It was a, a rainy cement factory, and it was getting pretty late in the night, and all of background had been there all day, and they were just, they were so great and, like, in good spirits, and it just made it really fun for us. And we got one take where we got to the director, Jack Bender, said, just do you guys, just do something. Aww. And I think he did this little nudge to me, and that was totally just us. We were roommates while we were in North Carolina filming. Really? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So from day one, we just, <clears throat> sorry, we just really connected, and so we roomed together. Great. That's yeah. perfect. It comes across on screen, the kind of charismatic relationship that you guys have. Yeah, we had dinner parties. It was awesome. And Alex came over, and we played a little Sinatra. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. Rad. Yeah. And we learned before, <laughs> right before shooting today, that your husband is an audio engineer? He is. He's an audio engineer, which helped me out a lot, because I would call and say, what's a generator? How do you turn one on? I don't know what to push in. And, and, and you have to pull something? I don't know. And I'm trying to like Google it. And he's like, well, you do this and you do this and you fade this tempo and you this and this and push this button. And uh, it helped a lot. 
But he yeah. made fun of me because I, I used to call him an overpaid button pusher. <laughs> <laughs> and now I was, I was the overpaid button pusher. So, Aww. yeah. <laughs> and switch flipper. Hey. Yeah. I Dial twister. Yeah. I had to crank that thing. Mm -hmm. They're like, just keep going. Just keep going. You also had a Yagi. Yeah. So oh, yeah. That. I had to really research what that was. Yeah. Yeah. So that is a real thing. It is. A Yagi Uda, I believe is Yagi what Uda. Yeah, you kind of see some on older um, houses sometimes. Hmm. They made this one out of, well, Dodie made this out of, um, like, tape measure things just to use the metal because she uses her gadgets and gizmos and scraps to create new beautiful tech pieces. Yeah. So, but you see them on houses, and there's two different kinds. I can't tell you which. Okay, right that's, that's fine. Okay. Whew. You're allowed to not okay. know because we don't know either we don't oh. expect this of you oh, okay right. thank you we we just want we just want you to be happy oh, That's right. you. you you died on one of our favorite shows oh. so all we want is for you to be happy i'm happy good <laughs> so your character though dies in the book early on yeah and the character in the book is the worst the worst. She's just the worst. And that's when when I was watching the show, early on, you get you like Dodie early on. And so I was like, I'm so glad they just changed this character completely. The only thing that's the same is the name, pretty much. Yeah. Because the character in the book is just like, she's not very smart. Like, she's easily murdered. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you don't want to be easily <laughs> murdered. That's like the one character trait you don't want in a, in, in a role. See, yeah. Dodie didn't go down without a fight in this episode. Yes. And Dodie is very smart. She's the exact opposite of the character that's in the book. So I was really pleasantly surprised that they change that around because I like it when they're they pile on more strong female roles yeah yeah um so you've had you've had quite a long career at this point I, your your first big role was in Donnie Darko yeah it was my first audition ever about 12 years ago yeah it was your first audition ever and yeah you got it. I know hey. it's crazy yeah yeah uh, uh, I grew up doing musical theater okay and so I did like little children's theater things and uh someone told me about this audition and how they thought I'd be great and it was fun <laughs> <laughs> What musical theater have you done? I'm a musical theater geek. So, so am I. Wait, so yeah. am I too. Favorite musical? Do you have one? Um, I love Brooklyn. Really? Yeah. Do you guys okay. know Brooklyn? Brooklyn. No. Yeah. It ran very Beaklin, shortly. Beeklin, the musical. I, I always called yeah, it Beeklin. Yeah, Beeklin. Yeah. yeah. I I'm a big ragtime fan. Oh, personally. ragtime. Ragtime's my favorite. I don't have a favorite. What? I can't it's pick hard. a favorite. That's like picking a favorite child. Yeah. Uh, none, because I don't have any. You don't have any either. <laughs> no, but so if I had like six <laughs> children, I couldn't pick a favorite. I guarantee you that if you ask a parent and they were really honest, they have a favorite. I'm sorry. I just I. Are you an only child? No, I. Oh, that's why I'm not. I'm the favorite child. <laughs> no, favorite. yeah, I am not the favorite child. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe. I know. I was at one point a favorite grandchild. Just saying. I'm just saying, some kids make life easier than others. Yes. Um, I'm not that one anymore. Anyway. <laughs> um, so it's actually, it's taken you a long time to get back to something kind of more supernatural. Like you you yeah. were, uh, you did di Gigantic mm -hmm. for a little while, and then you kind of bounced around to other places. Did Glee. it feel good to Didn't get... you do Glee? I did Glee. Yeah. I yeah. did a couple of episodes, yeah. I was a skank. You were a skank? Yeah. What? With Quinn under the bleachers mm -hmm. doing awful, awful things. Oh, when snap. She, like, I remember that when she, yeah, the yeah. red hair and the, yeah. and the nose ring. I was a posse of skanks. I don't know. <laughs> I just did this one. <laughs> <laughs> How embarrassing. Yeah. Like that? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Getting real. But did you like coming back to sci-fi after so long away? Yeah. I mean, I, I love comedy and just the timing and... I did some live audience stuff, and that's really kind of where I want to go. Mm -hmm. It's like a little mini play every week, and there's that live audience factor, but it's still taped. And But coming back to sci-fi was very interesting, and I'm not so tech-savvy, so it was a challenge. And um, the drama behind it, I just, like that last scene, it kind of made me feel like I actually got to act. Yeah. Um, so it was really good. The last time I felt that was when I worked with Dean. So in Breaking Bad and um, got to do it again with Dean. Great. Yeah. Dean, making you cry. Dean, <laughs> making me cry yeah. one show at a time. Uh, we have time for one more question. Jackie, 
Um, actually, this is a question as, is there anything you want to plug or any future endeavors you're doing that you want to announce here? I can't really say anything, but comedy. Comedy. Ooh, sweet. Yes. Okay. Well, we're going to be excited. We'll keep yeah, our we eyes. like comedy. Yeah, we're going to yeah. keep our eyes peeled on your Twitter uh, right. to see when you can announce it. Yes. And uh, I'm sure your fans will be very, very happy to see you again in the future. Jolene, thank you so much for joining us tonight. You've been a real, real delight. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And um, she's very active on Twitter. Tell them your Twitter uh, name. Uh, Jojo Purdy. Jojo Purdy. Um, real quick, we're just going to do predictions. Super, super lightning fast. And now, your After Buzz TV predictions. Jackie, go ahead. I think that Julia is going to come out of hiding and eventually help exonerate Barbie. Sweet. Okay, uh, I saw a noose potentially on Barbie's yes. horizon. Hopefully he doesn't wind up in it. Uh, the monarch will hopefully be crowned next week. Lots of craziness. We're not even really going to be able to guess what happens because who the F knows. So we're just going to be excited. It airs on Monday. We t tape Thursday. Please come back for that. Uh, jo uh, Jolene, you're at Jojo Purdy on Twitter. Yep. Okay. Jackie, where can the people find you? At 123Jackie underscore B on Twitter and at 123Jackie no underscore B on Instagram. Are you on Instagram? I'm not. Oh. It's okay. No. I'm not okay. either. We don't have to be, okay? <laughs> I just take pictures of stupid stuff, so if you yeah. want to follow me taking pictures of If you want to see stupid stuff, <laughs> one, two, three, Jackie, no underscore B on, <laughs> on Instagram. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Matt Lieberman. That's M-A-T-T-L-I-E-B-E-R-M-A-N. You can also find me here on AfterBuzz TV on the Breaking Bad, Low Winter Sun, and Sons of Anarchy after shows. Thank you guys so much. We will see you next week for the season finale. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.